Hello my gorgeous guys and dolls. Thank you very much for joining me again. Today we have another law Q&A video. So I came across this email and I have had similar emails before of the unfortunate circumstances of some of you either failing the LBC or failing the bar. I think it's called the BVS now. They keep changing the name. It used to be BBC, then it was BBTC, then it was BPT, BBC. They they love to change the name of the bar course in England. It's just, it's almost compulsive at this point. But anyway, I want to read it out to you and give my insight. Okay, dear Edil, I came across the YouTube video you made about failing the bar. Firstly, I want to appreciate your video in coming out to talk about your experience, as very few people have the courage to talk about it. I found your email on one of the comments. I was studying the BPTC at BBP University. My results came out yesterday. I did not pass. I used up my three chances to resit opinion writing. By the way, opinion is one of the most difficult subjects to pass. I got 57% and I got a not competent overall. I feel so sad and I'm thinking about the money spent on the course and the time. As a result of the bar, I suffer from depression and anxiety. Unfortunately, this is a very real, extremely common issue amongst law students of any caliber and at any stage. Like there are even law schools that have their own therapists and mental health help because it is such an intense subject and way of life when you when you start studying law that it does affect a lot of people's mental health, unfortunately. From watching your video, I have two options, which is study the New York bar or study the LPC and then transfer to being a barrister here if I wanted to. So I'm studying the LPC as a master with business management as my option B. I have an LLB and a master's degree in corporate and commercial. Very, very commendable. Which university are or you did you do the New York bar? What are the entry requirements and fees of the course? I have an LOB and master's in corporate and commercial law from England. I just want to research and have an idea. I look forward from hearing from you. I had failed the bar years ago and I took a break. I went back into dance and then when COVID hit, I decided to jump back on the legal wagon and finish thing is this person had already got their LOB and masters in corporate and commercial already that is something to be so proud of because having even a general basic law degree is arguably one of the hardest degrees to attain and unfortunately as I said before it does really take a toll on your mental emotional and physical health because it's such an intense subject to study it's not easy it's true that like a lot of people do fail both the lpc and the bar but nobody talks about it it's such almost taboo within the legal field like it's almost like you don't want to discuss it and it's embarrassing you feel ashamed you're very hard on yourself i feel law students generally are extremely hard on themselves very self-deprecating because when you go to law school, everyone's smart. You feel like the most stupid person in the room all the time. <laughs> and everyone is just, I feel like everyone is smart, but you compare yourself to everyone else. If you're not getting the highest grades, if you're not answering the most questions in class, if you're not being called upon and, you know, saying the most um, well thought out answers when the professor asks you, like just a lot of things to do with law school is very mentally taxing. It's not just the subject itself, but it's the environment and the mentality of everyone around you. So I am so sorry to this person who failed because I myself failed and I failed by two exams <laughs> because you do, and when I was doing it, you only, you only got two tries, you didn't get three. They actually changed that rule after I failed. So, and I, I couldn't go back and be like, hey, you owe me a third, but it's fine, it's done. But that's another thing that a lot of people don't realise about the course in England is that we have such a small, like, limited attempts. And if you fail, usually with the bar, you have to do all 14 exams again. So I have actually 
known a lot of people who had filled the bar with me and they went right back into it the year after. I didn't have the patience, time or mental capacity. I didn't have it in me. I was so burnt out. I didn't have it in me to, to just do it again. So I really, really admire and respect people who do go like jump back into it after going through all that. It is always good to have an option B, like a second plan. And my option B was doing the LPC, which, which I'm doing now. It's still not easy. Um, for those of you who are unaware, the LPC is the solicitor route and the BPTC, BPTC or BVC or BVS is the barrister route. And both of them have nearly identical exams. Both of them have 14 exams. Most of the exams are nearly four hours long and you have to pass all of them in order to qualify. And you still can't practice once you're done. You still have to get some sort of pupillage or training contract depending on which route you're going. But as for exam, like exams, that's it. You, you need 14 exams to to be qualified. I didn't do the New York bar. I don't know if you've seen my other uh, videos, but I did apply. They took about a year to get back to me only to reject me because of timing. You have to do your LLB consecutive, or yeah, is it, yeah, LLB, you can't have any breaks in your study. And that's the problem with me. They didn't like that I had breaks. And then they didn't like that I had a GDL. Even though I had a qualifying LLB, they didn't like that I had a break within my LLB. So they're really anal. Also, if you do anything online, they're not going to accept it either. Everything has to be done in person, which is silly because like all my degrees, all my law degrees are done in person. The only thing I have right now that I'm doing online is my LPC and my master's. And if I were to apply to New York, they'd still reject me because I'm doing it um, by distance, which is so stupid. I'm also very sorry to hear that you have de depression and anxiety from this. My heart goes out to you as it does to all the people in law in the field law students and lawyers alike it is really difficult and a lot of people really do not realize how difficult it is they think oh it's just you know being pussies or you know stop whining and complaining but it's we're really hard on ourselves like I said it's like you never feel good enough when you decide to to go into law you never feel good enough you get this um perfectionism complex and then self-deprecating -de like <laughs> and you have people tell you you're smart all the time but you don't feel it it doesn't matter who tells you what right it's just the process and the environment and what we go through that prevents us from feeling good but in the end once you do get that degree and that paper it feels like you're on top of the world I felt like that when I finished my law degrees. I was on a high. You're like on a mental high. It's like a drug. You're like, oh, you feel so good because of all the suffering and pain that you went through. And it's finally worth it when you have a piece of paper. But the problem with law is that just a law degree doesn't get you anywhere. It's kind of like you're in purgatory. You're stuck between two spaces, two stages. You've got your law degrees, so you're overqualified for some jobs, but then you're underqualified to actually go into law until you get qualified, until you finish your LPC or your bar. It's like, you know, having a JD without being barred. What's, what's the fucking point? What can you do? Become like an entry level paralegal uh, clerk, legal secretary. It's still not the ultimate goal when you go into law. So yeah, I didn't I didn't do the New York bar because I I didn't get in for the exa for the reasons I explained to you. And I don't know if you saw my last video, but they really don't like foreign lawyers. They really try to make it as difficult as possible for foreign lawyers to get in to sit the bar in New York. So the route I always recommend people to go is through California cuz California is a little more reasonable when it comes to foreign law degree holders and foreign lawyers. And I will say this again, but you do not have to practice in California just because you're barred in California. You just can't go to court and litigate anywhere else but California. But after five years, you can get sworn into another state. But you can still do legal work. You can work in a law firm in a lot of places all over the country if, you, if you're barred in California. You just don't have rights of audience and certain things. But you can generally do a lot of, a lot of work. At the law firm I was at for two years, 
uh, we had a few attorneys there who were barred in different states and they were doing immigration work and contract work and uh, trust in estates and things like that. It's just that, you know, when you're under a law firm, you just get s signed off by people in that law firm that are barred in that state and that's all. But you can still legally practice and work for that firm and do legal work under that firm. Be proud of the LLB and the commercial masters that you have because commercial is not easy. I, I failed commercial, um, so I'm having to retake the exam. It's a really difficult course. Like commercial is so, so uh, concentrated. It seems like fun, you know, when you read about it, but when you get into it, oh my God, it's all like inco terms and shipping and lots of international contracts between companies and risk where the risk passes and you know who assumes responsibility and who assumes the fees and this and that it's crazy you're dealing with a lot of the different intricate stages of each process when when there's a business contract with, especially with international um overseas trade don't ever feel this is something that i feel a lot of law students have in common is that they're depressed, they have anxiety, they feel worthless because they didn't pass that one thing. It's not the end of the world. That's what I learned. Just because I failed the bar, it's not the end of the world. There are options. And, you know, when I was on the bar, all they told you was litigation was the last resort. They really make uh, litigation look horrible. And it is like you you get into a law firm it's litigation is fucking terrible i hated it i hated my life when we were going through a litigation case dealing with the opposition and really hostile attorneys they were so fucking rude to me through email and i'm just like naturally like bubbly and happy so they're just so fucking rude i'm like okay thanks have a lovely day bye <laughs> i was still so nice because it's just how i am i just can't be rude to people unless they like absolutely deserve it but in my personal life as working for a law firm I can never do that I always have to remain professional and it is absolutely obscene and shocking of how unprofessional lawyers can be um between each other amongst each other especially in this country uh, <laughs> but yeah it it was it was horrible filing constant motions just waiting for the opposition, everything is just like pulling teeth and it's just such a stressful process with the client and high emotions and high stress and every time they come into the firm, it's like there's just rain cloud over everyone's head. It's just so depressing and so misery. It's misery. Litigation is absolute misery. The goal is to preserve commercial relationships as much as possible, as far, you know, as as far as you can, right? And litigation should be a last resort, but they really teach you that on the bar. It kind of kills your passion for litigation when you are on the bar. Because in the undergrad, when you are doing your LOB, they really like glorify it, you know, going to court and being this fierce white knight in shining armor and defending your case. And I was on the mooting team and I was in mooting competitions and it gives you a high to win a case and it was so fun but then you get into the real world and you realize that going to court advocacy is such a small fraction of the reality most of it is stress and filing motions and dealing with very angry people <laughs> so i changed my view and i thought i don't need to become a barrister as much as i loved mooting and as much as people told me how good i was at advocacy it's not something i need in my life especially the practice of it i i i loved what i was doing at the law firm for the last two years i loved working with clients and protecting generations of their family through trusts and wills and it, it was really rewarding. I loved keeping families together through immigration and getting multiple members of a one family, the, the citizenships one at a time. 
and I loved contractual work and fixing people's problems in that sense <laughs> legally just remember there are options I know it's so easy for people to be like oh my god it's the end of the world I failed the bar I failed the LPC there are always options and if worse comes to worse, you can always go back. The LPC and the bar aren't going anywhere. They will always remain there. And you are more than halfway there. If you've already got your law degree, you have a law degree ahead of everyone else who doesn't have a law degree. <laughs> you are way more ahead than people without anything who are wanting to get into law. And you've got your masters in corporate and commercial. That's so amazing. You should be so proud because it is very difficult and having your master's in commercial corporate law is very highly regarded by law firms everywhere. A lot of law firms look for that, especially when you wanna go into that field, having that will just put you one step ahead of people without it. So I know it's it sounds crazy maybe to outsiders uh, who are not in law thinking, oh my God, how are these arrogant assholes like sad when they've got like a law or, or multiple law degrees or whatever it's because we're not quite there yet even though to a normal person on the outside we have this degree but when we can't practice without going a whole bunch of steps further when you've passed 12 exams and you failed two and you needed all 14 to pass, it does feel like the end of the world. It is very difficult, something, it is depressing to go through, but I have to say, like, you can always go back, you can do it again. There's always the SQE, which is the super qualifying exam for solicitors, it's new. I heard it's very difficult because it's condensed, but it is there, and coming from a law background, it will be easier for you to complete that than someone without. Entry requirements and fees of the course. So for the bar for New York, like I said, they're very anal. You need an LLB and an LPC or LLB and a BVC or BPTC to take the New York bar exam. And that's after they've evaluated your credentials and deemed you okay to go. So they have a lot of stringent requirements for you to meet that. So you have to apply and be ready to wait six months to a year at least for them to get back to you and you may you may have been rejected so i always say it's good to also apply for california at the same time just in case fees it's 750 dollars to apply for the new york bar yeah when you apply to say they have their own internal evaluators, which I don't agree with, I don't like. They were very confused about my degrees. They were American. I don't like American people evaluating European degrees. It's very weird to me. They're, they're not really fully aware. Whereas when I, when I uh, went to A to Z evaluations, which is an external professional credential evaluator that California hires, California has a list of accredited evaluators on their website which they recommend you going to and I, I like that they're external so it's professionally done it's not by their own people internally and and I got mine evaluation it was fine so yeah when you do that it's fine 750 it hasn't changed that number's been quite the same for a number of years now and if you want to do any bar prep courses, whether you do California or New York route, you there are a bunch. The three main ones are Kaplan, Themis, and Barbary. I think I think Obama and his wife Michelle went to Barbary, and I think Hillary also took uh, went to Barbary. So it's just a bar prep course. It's a couple grand. Sometimes they have promotional deals and things where you can get discounts, so you can have a look at those as well. I hope I have given some of you some clarity and if any of you are out there who's failed recently don't give up I was one of those people and I got back on the wagon and my whole point is if you've already got your LLB especially if you've got a master's already in law you should be proud you have something that a lot of people don't have and it took a lot of great <sighs> strength and perseverance to get that degree generally. So you're halfway there, think of it like that. 
and it is very grueling and difficult but you're halfway there and you just have to go a little bit further and you can get back on and do and do that and you can go either way you can be a solicitor you can be a barrister and there are options you don't have to do the uk route you can see what you can do over here as well or other countries anyway i will see you in my next video if you have any comments or questions please leave them below take care bye bye